This week's podcast is proudly sponsored by the Marantz SR7015 AV Amplifier. Immerse yourself in stunning 3D surround sound with the most complete format support, including Auro 3D and IMAX Enhanced. The SR7015 easily handles demanding scenes in action films, as well as offering exceptional musical audio playback. Stream music from leading services and enjoy it throughout your whole home with HEOS built in. Discover more at Marantz.com. Hello and welcome to the AV Forums podcast streaming live on Wednesday the 2nd of December and joining me on this edition, Steve Withers. I'm in a glass case of emotion. Ed Selly. Milk was a bad choice. And Kaz Harlow. I love lamp. Right. I, once again, I said Ed Selly and uh, Silly has decided that she was going to I really ought to claim some sort of royalties for that. <laughs> you should. Every time I say your name, my uh, my phone does that. Uh, welcome along to the podcast. It's uh, the third last of, of the year. Normally we'd be saying, oh, this year's flying by. No, we want this year over and done with. Absolutely over and done with. Um, so uh, this evening, if you're watching us um, on YouTube, then of course you can subscribe. Please like the video. You don't have to do it right now because we're, we're just starting and you don't know what's in store for you yet. But if during the podcast you like what you're hearing or seeing, then please do give us a like. It is important. And of course, like I say, subscribe and hit the notification bell, uh, which will tell you every time we publish a new video. If you're catching up on the podcast after the live stream on YouTube, uh, then welcome. And again, thanks if you're listening to us on the audio only version. You can get that through iTunes, Spotify, and most other podcast providers. And once again, thanks for listening. If you want to ask any questions, uh, if you're listening after the event, then you can send us an email to podcast at avforums.com and uh, we will read it out and answer it in the next available podcast. And if you appreciate the forums, our editorial and our videos, then you could consider making a donation. There's two ways to do that. Uh, you can do it on a monthly basis for three pounds a month. If you go to our Patreon, that's patreon.com forward slash AV forums, where you can automatically support us for three pounds a month. Uh, so head over there and sign up. Or if you want to ask us a question, you want to grab our attention, which is normally the best way to do it, is to head over to Streamlabs dot com forward slash av forums uh, which is the perfect way to get your question answered you can donate any amount you like obviously we really do appreciate uh, the donations and the help and obviously if you are inclined to support us uh, then your contribution goes directly towards growing av forums improving the site speed and features producing more editorial content like news and reviews and one day we'll create the perfect podcast but we won't tell you when we're going to do that because we don't know. <laughs> um, so yes, thanks very much for your support. It is appreciated. Right. So uh, we didn't do what have you done this week, last week, because we were in lockdown. Uh, lockdown was released today. Did any, anybody go out today? Has anybody done anything? Did school run shops. Okay. What, what did you get at the shops, Steve? Food. <laughs> Free bent of spies? Uh, no, no. I did, that was a one-off. <laughs> <laughs> I bought that I'm glad in a moment to hear that. of panic. <laughs> Because I thought the shelves, well, the shelves were pretty empty. That was back in March, late March, and the shelves are quite empty. So I bought a couple of those. They, they over, yeah, on the cover, on, on the cover of the tin, they definitely oversell what's inside them. It's it's uh, it's the anti rom seal. It really pie. doesn't do what it says on the tin. I mean, if it's starvation or eating the pie, I'll eat the pie. But um, yeah, so it's not something I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage. Does that mean you're gonna get a couple in for January then? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, it might be wise to stock up before we get to the first of January. In Everything right. doubles yeah. in price and you can't get it anymore. I have yeah. bought another five kilo bag of basmati rice with that in mind. <laughs> I should do it. I should yeah. do it. Well, I mean, the I... other thing is that you're going to have uh, all those people spending five days together and then heading back across the country to different areas. So from probably Christmas Eve for the next two weeks after that, you want to avoid everywhere because, you know, it's just, it's going to be everywhere. It's a perfect again. storm in January. We're going to crash out of the European Union. And we're going to have COVID again. I think everybody's forgotten about that, Steve. It's, uh, yeah, it's, we've got, it's less than a month. And apparently, as far as I can tell, there's been no deal yet. So uh, good luck, lads. Yeah, <laughs> get, a, get, get a move on. Can't wait. Uh, yeah, so I went to the shops, bought some food. I had to go to the post office as well, post a couple of things that I'd sold on the classifieds. So, because um, I had to buy a new... Uh, a new spider, Spider X, to replace my Spider Five, because um, annoyingly, J I think we mentioned this when we were talking about the JVC 
firmware update, but they've changed the calibration software and now yeah. it doesn't work with the Spider Five. So I flogged that on the classifieds. If you if you don't know about the classifieds, by the way, amazing. If, if you're trying to sell any AV kit, it is the best place to go. No middleman, no fees. And you're basically dealing yeah, with just just, just be prepared for people to try and knock oh, you down yeah. all the time. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, but how's that? You're not going to get the best price, but you're how's selling it fast. Else? Yeah, um, <laughs> and unlike Gumtree, it's highly unlikely that someone's going to come around with a golf club, uh, hit you over the head with it, and then take the <laughs> item for nothing. So you know, it's um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, other sites are available, of course, for that experience. So well. I posted that. I bought some food, uh, and unfortunately, Tom's not here, but. Whilst I, you know, don't condone getting excited about Christmas in late October, now that we're into December, I am more than happy to get into the seasonal spirit. So uh, I put up my Christmas tree and decorations. Nice, cool. As you can see, I put um, my tree up as well. <laughs> is that metal post at it, the back? If your it? tree is a Klein K10 <laughs> with some tinsel wrapped around it, then okay, yeah. I, that'd, that'd be, be very on brand. Tinsel, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, what have I done this week? Uh, I've sat in the house, done lots of work. Um, I've got the plutonium now. I just need the DeLorean. Oh, do you mean talk about that that case, uh, the, uh, the flight case? Flight case. <laughs> yeah. So Sony projector turned up in a flight case. Took me ages to get up the stairs. It, it, these things are not light, even though it doesn't look very big. It's heavy and it's, it's got dense. wood on this side with wheels that you can wheel around. Um, the two handles to the top, so it was like one stair at a time getting it up the stairs. Um, so I got in touch with Steve to tell him, Steve, Sony projector turning up is going to turn up in a flight case, and it turned up in... A, well, it's normal box. <laughs> <laughs> Hang yes, on, that's the other thing I've been doing. Doesn't Steve have the more expensive of the Yes, that's, it doesn't yeah, make any no, sense it's weird, whatsoever. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so anyway, the Sony projector turned up in a in a flight case. Uh, I shall be working on that one over uh, this coming weekend uh, and discussing it on the podcast because I've got nothing else really to do. Yeah, next moment. Wednesday we'll talk yeah. about the Sony projectors. Yeah, we can do because we're going to. And talk then the week after Christmas uh, party. Christmas yeah, it's party. Christmas party. So you bring your uh, bring your games in, people. So, uh, just anyway. We've been holding socially distant Christmas parties for decades. <laughs> yeah, we're well prepared for this. We've been doing yeah, it. Yeah, we were. We'd I really. will visit my local Eastern European supermarket and buy buy a couple of bottles of things with only Cyrillic writing on, and we can <laughs> we can judge the results that they have on me in real time. I can't say fairer than that. Okay, but um, yeah, the last one of the year is going to be. Sort of movie centric, uh, not a lot of hardware to go through. We're going to talk more about movies, our favorite Christmas movies. Um, obviously, it's Die Hard, so we, we're going to talk about Die Hard for a while. Um, so, we're going to do that on the last one. Like I say, bring your, your games in and stuff, and we'll play games and do all sorts of things. So, if you've got any suggestions for the um, last podcast of the year, uh, or if you want to join us for the socially distant online party, should we have a pop quiz or something? We could do something like that, couldn't we? Oh, God. Um, no, if you want to do the questions. <laughs> I'm not doing anything that involves work. <laughs> sort of turn up. You, you never, you never do anything that involves work, Steve. I told you before. No, basically, no, like this... James Hunt at the Grand Prix when he was commentating. Turn up on race day, five minutes before the race starts, and go. Who's on pole? Murray. Who's on pole? We're off. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I think that's unfair. I think what is fair to say, despite starting at freelancing later than I did, Steve is the perfect embodiment of a freelancer. It's like, am I being paid for this? Yes. All right, then. Well, I'll, I'll give it as much effort as I feel that fee res- uh, uh, deserves. <laughs> Am I not being paid for this? No, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm not doing anything at all. <laughs> yeah, that sums it up. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and look, look, what was, it the, what was it the Joker said in The Dark Knight? If you're good at something, never do it for free. <laughs> you're bad at something, still don't do it for free. <laughs> I'm glad you covered yourself yeah. off. But what, what the, uh, what the yeah, listeners and viewers don't know is that Steve has a down to a T that he turns up three minutes before we go live on these things. One of these days he's going to turn up, and it, it, we're going to roll the credits and he will still be frantically <laughs> farting around with his AirPods <laughs> or something along those lines. It, 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 he will be caught out by this one of these yeah. days. Okay. Kaz, what have you been doing? Well, it was Thanksgiving, uh, which doesn't... Which is an American holiday. I know, and I have a lot of American clients. So the great oh, thing so about they Thanksgiving... They presumably weren't around then, were they? <laughs> <laughs> no, which is amazing. So, ah, so that's so, how all that work got done on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> explains a lot. It was. So you know, uh, I watched television. <laughs> uh, exactly, <laughs> but I have been inundated with uh, with discs. I mean, it's been really good. I've got. I've had a lot of new great releases come through. 
Yeah, yeah what, they, the, what the they, they to the you. end. <laughs> but they've what all the come through um, a week or two before the release date. And then the ones for that release date, so the ones this week, have all come through these last couple of days. So it's been insanely busy. What they haven't told you, Kaz, is that that's it. There are there is no more discs after this. Yeah, no, I know, I know. <laughs> that's the end of all things. Yeah, there isn't. That's that's the end of the discs this year. But um, uh, but uh, but this yeah, year? it has been pretty crazy. Yeah, good. Um, and most of those reviews uh, that are in the tank, they'll be. Uh, uh, popping up on a daily basis, so keep an eye on the, on the homepage. For we those. are, it must be said, we are bursting with premium content for December across music, movies, or sorry, hardware movies, a lot. I was looking at the CMS the other day. December, I mean, Christmas might be a washout and, and a COVID fest otherwise, but it's it's all killer and no filler on, our, on, on the site, it has to be said. Yeah, good, good. That's where we want it. Um, so, Ed, what have you been doing? Um, I have been finishing off some work. Uh, can you confirm once again, Phil, that um, on the 30th of November, you received yes. an email saying that content was all up yes. and all the rest of it, including... Uh, you were tweeting about that. It's, that's how rare this event well, is. Well, I know, I know, but nevertheless, it was Although, done. Although, you know, lockdown, it has to be said, during the <laughs> lockdown periods, the work has turned up on time, Steve. Well, yes, the, the, the distractions have been significantly reduced. <laughs> but that includes the um, largest uh, thing I've ever reviewed for AV Forums. That will be going up in December. Uh, I'm already was having a conversation. Unless it's with, the size of an 85-inch TV. Oh, it, no, weighs, it, it weighs a damn it's, sight more. <laughs> this is impressive and an impressive price tag to go with it as well. I think Edge has got it just because he wanted to experience Look, it. He dressed it up as work. That's what you did. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe, but nevertheless, I think I think people are going to enjoy this one. But now that's all been done. I uh, was proactively speaking to Phil this morning about things that are coming next. Um, I have otherwise, uh, I, I I have been um, trying to organise Christmas presents for various people, predominantly shopping online and not using the major online usual suspects, which sometimes results in you going my god that's much better than it would be if i was using one of the major online su suspects other times it's a nightmare so um that's basically what, what what i've been up to uh and i have been uh prepping my son for the national spelling bee um i did they weren't a thing when i was a kid we just had spelling tests so no, that was a thing now them. Well, it is now. There's a national spelling bee, um, and his teacher going. You know, he could, he could be really really good if if so. You know, we've been plowing through the words and snap tests. You know, in the car, you suddenly mute the hi-fi and go, "How do you spell such and such?" And he's getting he's getting really good. And so, century, go. He hates me, but nevertheless, he's making good progress. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that's all good. Um, but no, that that's the summation of it uh, at the moment. Uh, I might be going out for um, a substantial meal and some pint at the weekend so scotch egg i uh, do you know what um i feel <laughs> that the scotch egg is being unfairly maligned here there's a yes. pub near me that does mm -hmm. a salt a hot salt in bocca scotch egg smothered in hollandaise sauce with a rocket salad and i can tell you for free that that is quite a substantial meal and it's still a scotch egg so people are being very cruel about yeah. what no, is no. one of my favorite savory snacks in this. I, I once had one in a restaurant um and i've never seen anything like it it was obviously <laughs> cut in half but it was it, the egg was perfect on the inside it was obviously hot and all yeah. the, the way that the chef had created it it was yeah, it was spectacular i've never had one like that before no and that was substantial yeah so there you go but no i will probably um be trying to support uh, local hospitality because I'm a lush and also local hospitality needs to be um, supported so that's me okay grand uh, that's what we've been up to Com competitions now um, we are going to cut these down just a little bit Kaz uh, there is a list for those watching on the video um, but Kaz you're going to give us a highlight of what people oh. can win and where they can go to win it Yep, we've got 4k competitions for Westworld season 3 King in New York Evil Dead and Lady Killers a number of Blu-ray and DVD competitions, including Criterion's December titles, which will go up shortly, and a chance to win a copy of Denon Home 250 with AV Online, a Sharp HT SBW800 Dolby Atmos soundbar with wireless subwoofer, and a pair of Philips Fidelio X3 headphones. Hasn't that ended? I thought that was 1st of December. 
Boom. Is it? Don't know. I just that's well, what's stuck you've in the mind. the competitions, Kaz. <laughs> <Just> pull <laughs> them from the list. I mean, that's, some lucky so and so has already won those, and they oh, are mighty. Well, you can't you can't get the headphones. Yeah, I, it's because I do the list um, a couple <laughs> of days in advance. Uh, head over to AB Forums competitions to enter. All competitions open to eligible AB Forums members resident in the UK. Excellent. Um, uh, the reason we did that, just so you know, is that we were worried that it was slowly turning into the the gadget show. Yeah. It's like you you can win this random object and this random object <laughs> and this random object. So yeah, it's more about edited highlights, and you can look through the competitions at your leisure and decide yeah. what you want. Well, to we don't want to spoil it for you. We'll give you a couple of highlights, and then you can go <laughs> yeah. and see no, what no, the absolutely. pleasures are for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any exclusives this week, Kaz? Yeah, we got uh, some Patreon exclusives. Um, including Back to the Future on 4K Steelbook, which is closing shortly, and The Sun's Room on Blu-ray. No podcast exclusives. And we got a bunch of previous competition winners as well. Uh, Future Shark won the Lionsgate Cult Classics Blu-ray collection. Gus 1961 won the Crown Season 3 Blu-ray. Sarah B won a copy of Batman Death and the Family Blu-ray. Groovy Chick won a copy of Back to the Future 4K Trilogy. Uh, I haven't got that in the post yet, so sorry. That'll take a little bit longer to come out. Pyongyang won the podcast exclusive District 9 on 4K, and BFB won the Patreon exclusive White Snake on Blu ray. Okay. Uh, Patreon won, what was the Back to the Future 4K Steelbook? Is that right, Kaz? The f- podcast f- ex- uh, the, the, the Patreon, Patreon exclusive. Yeah. yeah. Patreon exclusive, right. Um, yeah. Stuart's going to tell me in my ear how yes. many patrons we have, because I think, how many? 29 people. I like those odds. 29 to 1 people to win the Back yeah. to the Future. <laughs> well, it would be 30 to 1 if you joined, but well, nevertheless. Yeah, yeah. But so yeah. There you go. What, what an excuse. Three pounds to, to join for the month. There you go. You can enter yourself into that competition. Those odds are pretty good. There are pretty good odds, actually, because only seven people have entered it. Oh, God. Well, there you go. Very good <laughs> odds. So very good odds. Seven people have entered it. Uh, 1,300 people have looked at it, but seven people have entered it. It's like the, um, years ago, Nescafe for Blend 37 uh, did a competition for a Renault Spider. Do you remember those? Um, and uh, because people thought, oh, well, everyone entered that, 86 people entered that competition to win a £40,000 car. <laughs> yeah, actually, looking at it, there is a Better Call Saul Season 5 on Blu-ray, which is Patreon as well, and only three people have entered that. There you go. Oh. You know, that, that's your Patreon money covered straight away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway. I think, Kaz, in fairness, you probably didn't need to bother apologising to Groovy Chick about the uh, lack of um, prize right now because I suspect she's not listening to this podcast. <laughs> that's fair enough. Yep. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. Is it what, how many people watching right now? <laughs> uh, 62. Don't, and don't I bet you they're all black. <laughs> And on that bombshell, uh, we'll be going to hardware next. Right, so let's move on to hardware. And uh, this week, we're going to talk about the best TVs of the year and our best projectors of the year. Um, It's the last of the Editor's Choice Awards. Uh, So... I'm not going to take all podcasts to do this because it could end up happening, um, but we're not going to do that because... Like the Father Ted speech. And now we come to the light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to be quite quick with this and I'm going to race through them, but we will bring out some uh, some points that need to be discussed uh, as we go through. And Steve will help me with this because uh, for some of these, like uh, in the home AVs, Steve did some of these reviews. Um, as well so our best home cinema tv um this was really easy um i've got to say it's a panasonic hz 2000 now right off the bat i am going to say yes it is a bloody expensive tv if all you're looking for is is a is a tv is an oled it's expensive the reason it's expensive is the amount of r&d that panasonic have put into this when panasonic set out to do something they tend to do it right. Their engineers are some of the best on the planet when it comes to um, TVs. I mean, you just have to look back to the old days with OLED you know, for proof of that. You know, they, they take things very, very seriously and they produce some spectacular results. And of course, uh, not just with Plasma and Panasonic, but a lot of pioneers engineers that worked on Plasma TV, they moved over 
uh, to Panasonic uh, when Pioneer stopped making them as well. So there's vast experience in there in their engineering department. And of course, what they've done with the HZ2000 is that they take the panel from LG and they will not tell you what they do because it's proprietary. But one of the things they do is they add a heat sink onto the rear to dissipate heat. Um, because when you're looking at uh, producing HDR pictures, uh, the screen does get hot because you're putting a lot of power through there to uh, to get the brightness. The peak brightness is excellent. Um, that's one area where they have pushed it. And of course, on the back of that, you get the uh, pixel level uh, precision with OLED for the dark area. So um, the work that they've put in, it produces one of the best images from a TV and I'm including LCDs and that QLEDs and so on in that um, the mastery that they have over this image and it looks so close to um, how it's supposed to look in terms of a professional monitor as well and I have been lucky enough um, not this year but, but certainly uh, in months gone by where I have had a Sony uh, you know to put up next to these screens and they do get very very close I think it's a GZ2000 that um, I managed to uh, to get them together and they're very, very close to each other. So that's the home cinema TV. It's not just picture either. Um, there is a Technics tune soundbar and, of course, the Dolby Atmos upward firing speakers. So you get a whole package here. You don't need to use the speakers if you don't want to, um, but it's there if you do want it. And, uh, but most of the most of the money that, that's been spent there is in the R and D of the of the panel, the professional custom panel, and it makes a big difference. Um, you. People, I think people expect it to be mega bright. It's not mega bright, but with HDR, it certainly has far more dynamic range than any other OLED TV. Um, and it does that without clipping details. Uh, and mainly in the dark areas as well. And we're going to come back to that. Um, well, actually, I'll do it as well, because the best HDR TV was, again, the HZ2000 for that very reason. Um, HDR is not just about bright specular highlights. The biggest advantage of HDR, and Steve will back me up on this, and it's something that works with projectors and stuff as well, is that you know, in the darker reaches of the image where your eye will see more uh, differences, that's a big area for HDR. And HDR, with a PQ curve, has more control over the darker areas of the image um, than a normal gamma curve would. And this is where you can really pick out details in, in the, the shadows, in the mid-tones, um, really add depth to the image. And it's something that people forget. And of course, um, one of the big swan songs for LCD TV is that the top end models, and I need to stress it is the top end models, can get really quite bright with peak brightness and, uh, and produce those highlights. But at the same time, they're using zones for the dark levels and the black levels, and they're not getting the same dynamic range. So where you've got a TV like the Panasonic, um, where it could be reaching eight, 850, 900 nits, um, and you've got a Samsung or whatever next to it that's doing 1,000 or 1,500 nits, I'll bet you that the Panasonic looks more dynamic because the blacks are superior. The dynamic range is superior there. That's not to say that LCD is not impressive because it is. And the more brightness that you can get in and the more dynamic range that you can have, it can be you know um, really impressive to see when it's done properly. Um, but until we see stuff like micro LED or so on, you're not going to see the advantages of that. So at this moment in time, for me, the best HDR TV of the year was the Panasonic HZ2000 because um, it has that full dynamic range available, um, the extra peak brightness, but not just extra peak brightness, everything else that goes in because the other thing, the Panasonic is superb at, and another reason why you'd spend the money if you're an enthusiast is just above black, stability, um, detail, it's it's absolutely pristine um, where the LGs and other screens, the Sonys and so on, um, they do have a tendency when coming out of black uh, that there are issues with posterization or flashing. Um, that can be an issue with certain material. The Panasonic doesn't do that. The Panasonic engineers discovered the issue two or three years ago and all their TVs um, are, are absolutely brilliant when it comes to uh, just above black and coming out of black and the HZ2000 is absolutely brilliant at that. So the next category we're going to discuss, uh, living room TV. So this is a TV that Steve reviewed, the LG G10. Uh, but it's also a TV that I've been living with for the last six weeks as my living room TV. 
actually. So the reasons for it being uh, living room TV, Steve, um, I guess the, the thing that, that hits you straight away is the design. It is a beautiful yeah. TV and it has everything built into the screen. It's a gorgeous piece of industrial design and it's what? two centimeters deep from top to bottom yeah it's uh it's incredibly thin i mean when you consider that they've got the you know the hdmi inputs uh the electronics the speaker the speakers all built into the chassis um you wonder you, you wonder how they achieve it uh and when it's wall mounted it looks absolutely stunning yeah and of course it comes with the wall mount in the in the box if you want to stand mount it you have to buy the stand mount which is two small feet that go at either end mm. um of the panel and that's how i've got the mine set up behind me um stand sitting on the on the on the desk there but uh wall mount it comes with the wall mount and uh, like you see it looks absolutely gorgeous when it's up against the wall and you can even get a um a g10 soundbar that Matching sits underneath soundbar, it as well yeah. Yeah. Ancient minds. No, no. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but, yeah. So we picked it for that reason. It's it's a beautiful looking TV. It really fits into our modern living room. And it's also got everything on board that you would need. So it's got web OS, it's got filmmaker mode, it's got Dolby Vision, IQ, Dolby Vision, HDR10, um, Dolby Atmos. Um, it also comes with most of the major apps like Disney Plus, uh, yeah, Prime every Video app, and so on. Apart from a couple of um, TV. Yeah. And of course, if you're if you're a gamer as well, it's got HDMI 2.1. It's 40 gigabits per second ports. Uh, they'll support G-Sync, VRR, ELLM, 10-bit uh, 4K 120 support as well. And the input lag was 12.9 milliseconds. So again, if you're a gamer, so as an all-rounder, which a living room TV has to be, it was the G10. Um, talking about gaming, a best value gaming TV, I gave that to the Samsung Q80T. Uh, reason for that is it's uh, at the moment it's 900 pounds for the 55 inch it's a uh, direct backlight so it's a fold set a uh, full array local dimming 50 zones it has uh, an impressive and aggressive algorithm for the local dimming um, which works really quite well for the uh, uh, for stuff like uh, movies with the black bars or actually solid black bars um, it, that makes a big difference I mean the Sony um, X, uh, XH95 in terms of looking at that in a professional monitor the, the image looked very very good but the black bars were they, they kept Not black. fading <laughs> they, they weren't actually black and that can be distracting I mean some people it wouldn't be an issue but for uh, somebody like myself I like to watch movies and I don't don't watch in darkness obviously with some bias lighting but even then even with some bias light the, the Sony was very very noticeable in terms of the black bars the samsung solid but the real i mean game changer for the q80 um is the fact that it has a 40 gigabits per second input on hdmi 4 um which means that you get all of the free sync vrr llm input lag of 11 milliseconds with and without hdr it's it's an x 120 hertz yeah 4k 120 and um um, although I've got to say it does 4K 120, I wasn't able to test that just yet. Yeah, I sorry, you should say that Samsung claims it does it. <laughs> yeah, um, I can test with 1080 4K, and um, it looked like it was dropping frames on that. But like I say, I couldn't test it with 4K 120. So, um, well, I won't pass judgment until I can test that, and hopefully we'll have some of the the new games consoles here for the next run of TV reviews um, as we go into the next year. But for 900 quid, it has all the HDMI 2.1 features. It's got EARC on HDMI 3 as well. So you can send, uh, you know, immersive, uh, uncompressed immersive audio backwards and forwards to sound bars and so on. So, um, yeah, absolutely cracking choice and great value at 900 quid, I've got to say. Best advanced uh, gaming TV was the LG C10. Um, the reason why, four HDMI 2.1 inputs, um, 40 gigabits per second. It does, like I say, everything that you would expect it to do via RELLM. It also does the uh, HDR gaming interest group. It has a setting under the dynamic tone mapping for that. Um, 1080, 120, it does that because I did test that um, and it does it perfectly. No drop frames. Um, gaming input lag was 13 milliseconds at 60 hertz, 6 milliseconds at 120 hertz. Um, yeah, and it comes in a 48-inch screen size. Um, so if you're looking for something to put up on your gaming desk or whatever, then uh, yeah, absolutely uh, 
bang on TV uh, for advanced gaming. Best value TV, I gave that to the TCL C815. It's the first TCL model I've actually looked at, and I was presently surprised. Um, very good quality in terms of build quality. Yes, it's using plastics and so on. Uh, it has an Onkyo soundbar, which you know, was really, really good when it came to audio. It's edge lit, so it does have a few of the, the drawbacks of edge lit TVs, but, you know, if you're using this in a normal living room with lighting, um, you know, normal lights and all the rest of it, and you're using it for normal TV viewing, maybe it's, uh, some movies here and there, HDR was a little bit on the, the undynamic side, but then it's an edge lit TV, and uh, manufacturers with edge TVs, they tend to hold back the peak brightness because if they go for full peak brightness because it's edge lit, it tends to wash out the whole screen. Um, you're better holding back a little bit and adding a little bit more in terms of um, some of the global dimming that you can do just to improve on that. It does Dolby Vision, HDR10+, plus, Dolby Atmos decoding. Um, and when it scores over um, some of the other value TVs, is uh, like the Hisense, well, this was 65 inches against 55 inch for the around about the same money. Um, so you get more real estate. And the other thing was Android TV. Um, we, we've had our run-ins with Android TV over the year, but I think now it's gotten to the point where it's stable. Um, and uh, because of that, and because it has a lot of more features than in-house smart TV systems, which is what you tend to find at this price point, like the Hisense has its own uh, video um, system, which is good. But it's it's not as well developed as Android TV. Android TV has been around for years and been developed and built upon and built upon. So for those for those issues and those plus points, that's how it got our best value TV. Because if you're looking for good value, I'm trying to remember the price off the top of my head. I think it's 750 quid. Um, it's well worth that money. Um, and the Onkyo soundbar actually sounds very, very good. Uh, but best luxury TV. Surprisingly, this one doesn't cost a hell of a lot of money. And um, we're talking about the Philips OLED Plus 935. Uh, I think the 55 inch is available at the moment for about 1,800 quid, which is stonking value for a... And, and the reason we call it a premium TV is the design is fantastic. The soundbar from uh, Bowers and Wilkins is fantastic. They use um, some really nice materials. So the back of the remote control has Scotch leather on it. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to pass over to Steve to pronounce the name of the material that goes over the, the speaker. Red rat. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> Everything these days. <laughs> they use that for the speaker bar. Obviously, it's got the tweeter on top. Um, I, the highlight for the TV is the speaker bar. Uh, and it's a speaker bar, not a sound bar. Uh, Bowers don't like it being called a sound bar. It is a speaker. It is a Bowers and Milken speaker. It sounds like a Bowers and Milken speaker. Um it's it's fantastic. They've they've redesigned it from last year and, and the 934 last year, it sounded good, but they've updated the drivers, um, they've put the tweeter on top, they've uh, changed some of the DSP, you've got the upward firing drivers for Atmos, um, and it sounds brilliant. And again, it's 1800 quid for this TV and it looks gorgeous. It sounds great. The picture quality is really good. It's got the uh, four-sided ambulance. It's the first time it's ever had a four-sided ambulance. And of course, that has its excellent um, ISF bias light mode. Yep. And we spoke about bias lighting earlier in the year on the podcast and why that's important. So Philips have managed to make a black rectangle look very, very nice. It must be um, said that they've gone from the verge of you know, extinction slash irrelevance, whatever, whichever phrase, to being absolutely key competitors in in the in the television in you know in the premium television absolutely. segment. Absolutely, and in, of course I put them. Start. Yeah, and of course I put them side by side with the Panasonics and the LGs and Sony, and they stand up to that. They absolutely stand up in terms of picture quality. Now you could say, well, they would because LG display supply the displays, but a lot of the processing behind these TVs is what makes the difference and what makes them stand out. Like the Panasonic, uh, where it's superb just above black and and you know peak highlights and so on. You know what Philips do is really really good. Now where we sometimes head, but against Philips is is the fact that a lot of their picture processing. I'm going to come on to it as well is for more more of the people that like to watch in standard and vivid mode and smooth video and all the rest of it. But saying that, in terms of motion, they've really improved the motion this as year. As long as you can turn um, it off, it's just... 
yeah it's, absolutely it's, yeah, it's like it's like it's like having all the modes that make silly noises in your car and all the rest of it when yeah. when it, if it comes to the fact that as long as they're not 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 obligatory it shouldn't ever be an issue yeah so that's the phillips oled 935 i'm going to talk about it again in a second so we won't go any further but steve's going to talk about the best 8k tv now i have seen an 8k tv this year but this was the best one and steve looked at it yeah um samsung's flagship q950 ts um 8k of course 500 roughly 500 zones of local dimming direct led backlight <clears throat> incredibly thin considering it's got a direct led backlight a uh, gorgeous piece of industrial design uh, it's got the full ties and platform um Really, really impressive upscaling. So even with non 8K, which is, let's be honest, most of the stuff you're going to be watching uh, at the moment, um, even with you know, a 4K disc, the upscaling is so good that it, it looks almost 8K. It's really impressive. Um, it's, a, it's a cracking all around package. It's got the one connect box. You know, it's basically uh, Samsung's sort of, you know, technological statement for this for this year, for 2020. Um, my only f- complaints, uh, the same complaints I have every year with the Samsung TV. It doesn't support Dolby Atmos. Uh, well, sorry, it does. It will pass Dolby Atmos from its built-in apps to a third, you know, an out- outsourced decoder in like a sound bar or a sound system. But it doesn't uh, internally decode it, and it doesn't support Dolby Vision. Uh, and you know, I really wish Samsung would just, you know, accept reality yeah. and put Dolby Vision on their TVs. And because yeah. you know, HDR 10 Plus is just an on event now. No one's supporting it, but everyone is supporting Dolby Vision. So. Um, other than that, though, it's it's hard to fault. It's it's a really superb 8K TV. Yeah, and it's beautiful as well. It's, it's one it's of the best designed TVs I've seen in a long time. Um, they made a big thing about it at CES, and I'm not surprised. It looked amazing at CES, and, and of course, it's almost bezel-less. You know, the picture goes right yeah, into the edge. Yeah, right to the edge. Yeah, it's fantastic. Really, really good. Uh, so there you go. That's the best 8K TV. Uh, best HDR TV, we've already mentioned that, it was the Panasonic HZ2000. Uh, best smart TV system, it's it's really, really close. It was this of ties and really. And the reason that I went with LG WebOS is basically because you've just mentioned it there, Steve. Samsung do not support uh, Dolby Vision, which means that uh, on ties and you can't watch uh, a lot of the premium maps. Netflix, Disney Plus, yeah. and Apple TV Plus. You can't watch it in Dolby Vision or with uh, Atmos. So it's it's... Yeah, you know, it's it, that's why it, LG got it. I mean, LG are missing some apps. Um, they're missing ITV, they're missing Channel Four, and they're missing Channel Five. To me, I don't care. I've never watched those apps as long as it's got iPlayer and Netflix and Prime Video and so on. But I understand people do like ITV Player and so on. Um, it's not there just yet. It's a it's a bit of a faux pas on on LG's part this year, the free replay thing, but. You know, these things will turn up eventually um, on the system. BBC iPlayer is already there. Uh, but as an AV fan, and this was the important thing, I think, and this is why uh, I thought about this one long and hard, is the fact that it does Dolby Vision, it does Dolby Atmos from the major apps. And that, if you're an AV fan, that's what you want. And it's a slick, uh, powerful system that works. And Tizen really is nipping at the heels. And if, if you know, they were to do Dolby Vision, I think Tizen would get it because I think it's yeah, it's, it it's a slightly better system. Um, but they're so very, very close. And it, as I say, we scored this one just on you being an AV fan. Moving on to TV sound, um, it's always been an issue, sound on TVs, especially when they get so thin these days. OLED is incredibly thin. Um, and then you've got uh, QLED TVs getting thinner and thinner as well. So where do you put the speakers? How do you move the air uh, to create the sound? It's been an issue for a while. But Sony, uh, for a number of years, have gone on a different tack to everybody else who normally adds a sound bar at the bottom or so on. And they've gone with the acoustic surface audio, which is basically two transducers uh, on the back of uh, the panel and two uh, normal subwoofers built into the back of the TV. Um, and what it does is it uses the screen as the speaker. And it's fantastic. And the reason why it's fantastic is that subconsciously, that's where you expect the sound to come from. If you're watching somebody talking on a TV, the sound shouldn't come from the bottom of the TV or the sides of the TV. It should come from where that person's speaking. And this TV does that. It's almost like having, well, it is. It's like having your speakers behind your projection screen Mm. um, and having an acoustically transparent screen. There's a reason why you do that. It's because it sounds natural and it sounds better and it takes the speakers away from your line of view, line of sight, and it 
creates a, a different experience. So there are better systems out there that we didn't review this year from Sony. Obviously, the step-up uh, screens will sound a little bit better. There's a bit more in them. We reviewed the the A8 this year. That's why it wins the award. And it's it's a cracking system. Um, it's, if you've never heard one, go listen to one. because it's, 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 It was the moment where Sony sort of got some of its innovation mojo back. Yeah. Absolutely. For me, it was an I, I, I genuinely impressive. It's it's the sort of thing where, where it, it's not only clever; it's it's the sort of thing which actually does win people over. So yeah, it yeah. It, it for me, it's by a country mile the best solution. Yeah, out there. I mean, the, the only thing they haven't done, and I wish they would do it, is that they were to if they built a uh, surround sound system with speakers voiced the same as the TV that you could install in your living room and have a 5-1 or a 7-1 system or Atmos up, upper fires and so on. There's a market for that. Use the TV as the center speaker and you know have the voiced speakers uh, as a sound system. I wish they would look at that because I think mm. that would be, that'd be a fantastic thing. Anyway, moving on. Best luxury TV sound uh, goes to the Philips OLED Plus 935. Bowers & Wilkins sound bar. I've already discussed it. Um, you know, it's uh, an absolutely stonking speaker bar, and the TV's not the bad either. Uh, the TV's really good, so uh, that's why it wins uh, for that picture processing. We give it to the fourth gen P5 with AI Plus from Philips. Again, you know, um, many of the capabilities of this processor um, are not really what you'd expect for a video file or purist like uh, myself and Steve, who you know would rather go for a- accuracy and so on, but. You can't get away from the power and precision and and the work that Danny Tack puts into um, producing the, the P5 processor. It's impressive what it does. And if you, you're not somebody who wants to go down the route of, um, you know, watching everything as it's supposed to be and you'd rather, uh, you know, decide what Spielberg's film should look like or whatever and use standard or vivid mode, it, they do standard and vivid mode better than anybody else in terms of... Uh, uh, picture quality, you know, the processing, the upscaling, the sharpness, the decontouring, all sorts of things. Um, so it wins it for that, but it also wins it for the fact that if you are a purist, the upscaling is fantastic. Really, really good upscaling. Um, it can look a little bit over sharp, um, which is a little bit of a downside on it. But again, you can knock the sharpness back a couple of, you know, uh, notches in, in that that solves that issue. But upscaling, motion processing, and the fact that they've added two new settings, so you've got pure cinema and movie. Pure cinema does 5.5 five pull down for 24 frames per second material, so you get no judder, um, telesecond judder at all. Um, and the cinema preset, it's des- uh, sorry, movie preset, is designed to get around the sample and hold effect um, of an OLED TV. I'm not going to explain that. Uh, just yet, because <laughs> we could be here for hours explaining sample and hold and why it does that and so on. But um, it it combats that, so it makes it look a little bit smoother. It adds a tiny little bit of interpolation in. I mean, I can see it, but I can see interpolation on anything that's not 20. I'm so used to seeing 24 frames. I usually can tell straight away, and I know Steve will probably be with the same. But um, you can forgive it if you're watching video content or you're watching football or whatever with that's made in video anyway, it's not film content, then it, it makes a makes a big difference in terms of the motion. Especially stuff with fast cuts, which can, you know, on some TVs it can confuse the TV in terms of motion if it's a fast cut, uh, which you'll find on, you know, most TV channels, adverts, that kind of thing, can throw it out. Um, this is solid. So there you go. P5 AI Plus uh, wins the award for um, Best Picture Processing. And then the final award is TV of the Year, which is the Panasonic HZ2000. Sometimes when you're compiling these things, and, and me and Steve had a long chat about this, uh, you know, what, what we thought the winners would be, what, what who the contenders would be, and so on. Um, and... With TV of the Year, you could go one or two ways. You can either give it to the one that is the best all-rounder, so it has the best smart TV, it's got decent picture quality, decent sound quality, and it's value for money. And last year, we gave it to uh, the C9, the LG C9, because it was a great all-rounder, really good picture quality, good sound quality, uh, good smart TV. This year, picture quality was a winner. Um, I just think it's such a step up, and it's such a statement from Panasonic, this TV. Yes, the GZ2000 was good. It was a little bit rough around the edges. They've smoothed that out. 
they've smoothed some of the, there was some posturization issues with bright objects and so on. They've managed to you know, find solutions for that with the HZ2000. Um, I could not fault it other than the price. And again, you're paying for the, the R&D and the, the research that's gone into producing uh, the panel that's in the TV. Um, it is expensive, but if you want the absolute best TV, for picture quality and for movie watching, which is what you know their tagline's been Hollywood to the home for a number of years now, and these TVs are sold into professional facilities. You know the uh, there are professional editions of these TVs. It does need a seventy-seven. It does, and the reason is supply. So it's not that they don't want to do it; it's that they can't get hold of them. Basically, um, I mean, yes, it would. Be, it would given that if you it, obviously, you know, like anything else, budget does does apply but it applies less significantly the further up this you go yes there it has the the, the, the means to be a category killer but it, it's there's this the, the mildest hint of frustration that you can't have this extremely cinematic television <laughs> in the biggest and, and most yeah, cinematic yeah, size yeah. and going. of course those are conversations that i have had um behind the scenes and so on and said look you know and and I've got an agreement, you know, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to do it. It's just, it comes down to supply. It's like we discussed with the 48 inch TVs um, earlier this year, they come from the same piece of glass and they only make so many um, from one piece of glass. And that's why 77s are, are quite rare and 48s are quite rare because, you know, of the way they're produced. Whereas 55s, you take one bit of glass and you get, I think it's six TVs out of it or, it could be even more than that. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you know, it's just scale. There's more scale in 55 and 65 than there is 77 and 48. So, uh, but yeah, I've raised that question. Although having Anderson. said that, there's some cracking deals on 77 inch C10s. It is, isn't it? Three thousand two hundred ninety nine quid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's absolutely yeah. bargain. Yeah. So there you go. HZ2000 is our TV of the year, and it's all down to that picture quality. Um, It'd be nice if, I, I don't know if the volume's there, this is the thing, but it would be nice if Panasonic did a monitor-only version mm. um, without the speakers. Uh, I don't think it would affect the cost that much. Um, you know, I still think it'd be an expensive TV because of the, what they do to the panel. Um, but it'd be nice to have that option. I know, you know, Pioneer used to do that back in the day. You had the choice of, you had it as a monitor or you bought the speaker and attached the speakers to it and so on. So... You know, that, I think that's the only thing missing from the Panasonic lineup is the monitor-only version. Obviously, there's the uh, uh, the 1000 this year because um, uh, the 980 is last year's 950. Um, the 1000 this year is the TV with built-in speakers, but is more of a monitor-based, but it doesn't have the peak brightness of the HZ2000. It has some of the other advantages, but it doesn't have that peak brightness of the just above black. So, yeah. I think that's the only thing missing from Panasonic's lineup. And, you know, fingers crossed that they give us more of this because, uh, you know, it is a lot of money, but it's well worth the money. You can see where the money goes. And if you are an enthusiast and that's what you want, um, Panasonic is is definitely uh, the TV of the year for this year. Right. Projectors are going to be very, very quick. Um, he it's says. Four, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, five, I think. Yeah. Uh, I lost my thing there. Um, you've seen more of these than I have, Steve. So, um, so I, actually, I think it was uh, it's a draw. I think we've seen both seen about the same. So, the uh, best LCD projector of the year was oh oh the Epson um, EHTW nine <coughs> nine four hundred. Uh, yeah, Sorry, best LCD <coughs> best LCD projector and probably the bargain projector of the year. I was going to say, I mean, to be honest, I mean, as, as far as LCD projectors go, obviously you're talking about Epson, um, but the TW nine four hundred is the flagship um, of their of their range of their LCD range, and uh, despite that, it's also an absolute bargain. Uh, it's two thousand three nine nine, I think, at the moment, or maybe even less than that currently. But you're getting a fully spec projector with a lens cover, lens memory. Um, motorized lens controls, obviously, uh, CMS, uh, all the calibration controls, great picture. It's not native 4K. It uses, um, you know, um, wobulation to create the image, but it looks high resolution. Uh, it can accept 4K. It supports HDR. The picture is superb. It's a really, really good projector. And aside from, you know, the slight danger of maybe dust blobs on an LCD projector, it's really hard to fault at that price. Um, and if, you got, if you're looking at something in the sub 
well, if basically if your budget's sort of sub 4,000, um, then uh, this is the projector you should be buying, really. Yeah, it's a real home center projector. And uh, unlike the quite big, I should bear that in mind. <laughs> yeah, which is what I meant. It's a, it's a proper home cinema projector. and It's uh, it's big. The other thing is it does wide color gamut, Steve, which uh, DLP it does can't do. very wide, yes. Um, so, you know, you're spending the same money on a DLP, uh, you're actually getting a very different projector um, at that price point. So I would say that for home cinema, the, the Epson is the one you want if you're watching in a really dark room. Nice big screen, yeah. You yeah, want. if you're building a dedicated room and you and you're looking for something, you know, you're not, you're not you, and you can't afford to go up to the sort of five grand bracket where you're looking at the the Sony's, for example. If you're looking at that slightly lower price bracket, but you're building a dedicated room, this is the projector you should buy. Yeah. If on the other hand you want an all rounder that's bright, um, it does 4K, uh, but also um, has good motion, does 3D very very well. Uh, sports wise and so on is very good then you're looking at dlp for that um and the benq w5700 is the cine prime series uh, single chip dlp again it's uh, it does uh, the quadruple flash to create for uh, 8.3 million pixels um so it does it so quick that it, it tricks your eye into seeing more resolution yeah it it's does not, really work actually you it does yeah <laughs> it does i mean they're, they're 1080 chips but you, you wouldn't know that looking at any it. it's only when you put test patterns up that you can start to see around it a little bit. But yeah. nobody sits and watches test patterns apart from me yeah. and Steve. So. And because it's well, a single chip, um, it's very sharp focus. Yeah, yeah, really sharp. Um, nice and bright as well. Uh, the only thing it can't do really is DCI-P3 gamut. You know, it, can't, it can only just get, get a little bit wider than Rec 709. It's it's but, a lot wider than than other DLPs that we've seen. I think. Yes, it's, it is. It's, it's it is. Full yeah. park, and it's uh, it's um, seven twenty. You know, uh, Rec seven twenty coverage is actually very good, which only a couple of years ago DLP couldn't do properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So seven or nine was always an issue for uh, yeah, yeah for DLP projectors, mainly in the green, um, yeah. green and yellows where it, where it would struggle. But nowadays, you know, most of them can cover Rec seven or nine easily. But getting up to DCI-P3 is a struggle. Um, this machine gives gives it a good go. Um, doesn't quite get there. And HDR is not really HDR. But then you're talking about projector here. And getting HDR from a projector is incredibly difficult. Um, and and it's more about you know an accurate image. And, and it, well, it looked accurate. Motion is really good uh, as well. So there you go. The BenQ W5700 was our choice there for DLP. Uh, best ultra short throw projector, Steve. Yeah, so we're saying, when we say ultra short throw, we mean something that's literally just this far from the wall, um, you know, between 20 centimetres, you know, around about 20 centimetres. It's very, very ultra short throw. But the idea is um, that you use it as an alternative to a TV. So this is the Samsung the premier which uh, lsp90 and um it's not cheap it's six nine 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 so just a pound under seven grand i mean that puts it price wise up against things like the sony's and the jvc's um but this is obviously aimed at a, a sort of a niche of a niche really the people that are looking for something that's gonna they can fit in their lounge without being obtrusive that doesn't require to project across the room it's ultra short throw um you know, you put it with a, a decent light rejection screen and you could, and it is bright enough to be used uh, in a lounge, a regular lounge, um, as alternative TV. It uses a laser light source, so you get relatively, not instant, but very fast on and almost instant off. Um, it has Tizen built into it, so it's got a full Samsung smart platform built in with all the catch-up services. Um, and... Um, it supports HDR and HDR10 plus as well, which is a first for a projector. It's a it's a really good product. It's not cheap and it's aimed at a specific niche of the market. But if that's what you're looking for, of the ones I've seen, this is the best. Uh, and the color gamut's enormous. Yeah, good. Um, right, and then to wrap off, um, wrap off, wrap up, <laughs> even <laughs> uh, best native 4K projector. Uh, we give that to the JVC DLA N5. I've been living with this projector for almost a year now. I love it. I love it to bits. It doesn't have the wide color gamut filter that the N7 and the NX9 has. Um, but saying that, it still produces an excellent 4K uh, image. Obviously, it's a native 4K projector. Uh, it's had the updates as well. So it now does, you know, the uh, frame adapt and the uh, the optimizer. 3.5 firmware has the, the optimizer as well. Um, 
it's a cracking projector. And the build quality as well, I sent this to Steve earlier on today, you know, um, when I took this down to put the Sony up, the build quality on this is fantastic. It's the same as the N7. Um, really, really well built. I mean, you lose some of the features that you used to have, like the uh, the lens, motorized lens cover and so on. and, and so. On. But, you know, you can get away with that. You don't really need that. You're not going to suffer from dust blobs or anything like that. With it's the, a sealed with the light. Pop, it's so a sealed it's sealed so it's fine um so yeah it's it's just about getting dust on the lens to be honest and that's not really an issue so uh it's quiet in use even in high lamp mode um it always surprises me how quiet it is in fact the amps that i have running running in the cinema room at the minute ada's um they're about twice as loud (laughs) they're not quiet um they need to go in a separate room that's the custom installed devices they really need to be uh, in a loft space or in another dedicated room somewhere. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a really impressive machine. Um, I really, I, I love having it around. It's, it's luckily enough with lockdown and everything else, it's stayed here um, for most of this year. It should have went back a while ago. Um, so I've been very, very lucky to use it most this year. And I think it's an, it's an absolute crack. And, and the only negative, and it's not really a negative, it's just, it's a different device. Compared to the X7900, which I have is here as well, um, the X7900 has a little bit better dynamic range in terms of black levels. This is slightly raised compared to that. Yeah. But, you know, in isolation, and I use it in isolation, I never do it side by side, it's good enough. And they're just above black and the shadow details and everything else. And like I say, the, the PQ curve that we use now, um, it's so good at, at bringing out details within HDR images. It looks fantastic. I mean, watching The Mandalorian on Disney Plus on a 10-foot scope screen with uh, with this projector, it looks sublime. It's absolutely amazing. And, of course, a lot of that's down to the glass and everything else and the fact that it is native. But, yeah, it's a cracking projector. Uh, Steve, you've had the, the N7 for nearly two years now, isn't it? Uh, is... It'll be two years in January. Yeah, so you've been using that, and obviously the 3.5 firmware, um, you've just updated your review, actually. It's back on the homepage again. Yeah, yeah. So, um, again, it's a no, cracking machine. I love it. I mean, if you can't afford the N7, then the N5 is almost exactly the same, apart from, as you said, Phil, not having the color filter, which I don't think you're going to really notice, and being slightly not, not, not quite as bright, but again, I don't think you're going to notice. So, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, get the N5 if you can't afford the N7, but the N7 is an absolutely stonking piece of kit. I don't think there's any projector at that price point that gets close to it. Or above it, or, or frankly, above that price point, it really yeah. is a great performer. It looks superb with SDR and HDR. Yeah. Although if you if you gave me a choice of having the three, uh, which one or the three I'd have, I'd have the NX9. <laughs> yeah, that's like eighteen grand, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yeah. succeeds yeah. like excess. We but it's it, it's got a piece of glass on it, Steve. That's yeah. Well, that's the absolutely. thing. That's where the yeah. uh, when it comes to projectors, the one thing. And it's quite often why a projector is particularly expensive is if, if it's got a really high quality piece of glass. Uh, and obviously, if you're dealing with um, with it 4K, you know, that can make a visible difference. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So I guess we've done the editor's choice and, and we're actually on time. <laughs> That's Ish. unbelievable. Okay. Nope. Yeah, we're three, three minutes to or two minutes to eight. So uh, Bang on. So uh, we've got software coming up next and hopefully Kaz is going to come back. <laughs> it's going to come back. Otherwise, it's going to be very ad hoc. Yeah. Right. So uh, moving on to software and Kaz rejoins us. Welcome back, Kaz. Uh, you're going to have to stay silent just for a little bit longer, though, because Ed's got to do his uh, album of the week. So, Ed, what is your album of the week? Yeah, this won't take very long. Uh, I didn't think last week was very good for music, um, unless you want Christmas albums, and there's millions of Christmas albums, but I'm ideologically opposed to naming a Christmas album as album of the week. Um, you have got, uh, for your consideration, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Seer, C-Y-R. I don't know how they want to pronounce it. Um, this is a bit weird. Um, if you are a huge fan of the original, you know, formative Smashing Pumpkins, uh, there's no sense getting worked up about this. It doesn't sound like that. This is Billy Corgan doing 
different things, but it's quite likable different things. Uh, as long as you don't expect it to channel that iconic sound from the mid 90s, um, I thought this was quite a good listen. It's It's got some good tunes in there, uh, good songwriting, good song craft, all the rest of it, and so on and so forth. I just, if you find me not getting terribly excited, as I say, I just don't think it was a particularly good week for music so i'm going to be mercifully brief on this one all i would say is if you must have a christmas album uh the killers uh re-released um don't waste your wishes because they did a christmas single every year between 2006 and 2016 including some very big names performing on those christmas singles that's back on streaming services with a vengeance it was released for about 15 seconds re-released on vinyl it's one of the most expensive records going um in terms of 21st century productions the original they repressed a couple uh, and they disappeared instantly so that's worth a go if you fancy a christmas album that's a bit different that that's worth it as well but that was music for the week i suspect it's going to be low key throughout december because it's just people uh, singing out of copyright stuff badly for the most part. Okay, thanks very much for that, Ed. And Steve Mann has just mentioned that it's 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so you're drinking early, Ed. Sun's over the yard arm. So, yeah, <laughs> somewhere in the world, the sun's always over the yard arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, so that's uh, the uh, album of the week. I think it's, it's going to get difficult doing an album of the week now we're into uh, Christmas. Uh, no, I'll, I'll keep at it. And every now and again, okay. something magnificent slips through the cracks figuratively speaking but um yeah this week just wasn't a great one i mean the electronic artists just re- they, they don't pay attention to seasons or festivals so if one of those releases something good then who knows next week could be a blinder okay before we move on to uh film review tv reviews and so on um we need to say a fond farewell to dave prouse darth vader um he died uh was it early this week or was it last week i can't remember no, it was this week it was on it was uh, this wednesday week, yeah. tuesday tuesday yeah. tuesday no, today's Wednesday, isn't it? Monday. He died on Monday. Was it Monday, was it? Monday. It, it, the days all run into each other at the minute, but it's very, very sad uh, to, to see Dave pass away. He's, he's, I think he was one of uh, the few cast members who loved the fans and really mm. did love the fans and was always there for the fans. Well, pretty hard done by, I think, by Lucasfilm, to be honest as yeah, well, I because think they so. accused him of, uh, of leaking stuff on Empire Strikes Back, which, which he didn't do. And um, uh, they were a bit mean to him, uh, I, I always thought. Um, there's a really good documentary. I don't know if it's still on Amazon, but it was a, a great documentary where, uh, about, about his life and his career. And the guy who did it, he was a Spanish filmmaker, but he actually reshot the end of um, Jedi and had Dave uh, Prowse being unmasked as, as Vader rather than uh, Sebastian Shaw. Um, Which is, you know, in some ways, given that he and um, Hayden Christensen had the same hair, was, um, you know, in some regards, quite... Uh, quite There's some great quite photographs quite of him with the helmet off on, on the set of Star Wars with some cracking 70s sideburns. Absolutely <laughs> gigantic. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but my mum used to go out with Dave Prowse. Um, yeah, she when mentioned we were it before. teenagers in, yeah. in Bristol. Um, she went out with Darth Vader. So, yeah, I guess when it come, when people look back on 2020... He could have been and, your and, father. <laughs> well, yeah, Steve would have been altogether larger if that had been the case. Yeah, a, lot bigger, a much bigger <laughs> man if that was the case. Um, yeah, when it comes back to 2020 and the pandemic, I guess the great, the biggest... You know, the, the, the person, the biggest person killed by COVID will end up being Darth Vader, of all people. So. I mean, I did enjoy that it was an opportunity for people to re, re-put up the, the clips of um, him saying Darth Vader's... In his own accent. In, in, a, in a strong West Country accent. can't believe he was surprised they dubbed his voice. <laughs> it would have put a totally different the forest spin. be strong with you, young Skywalker, but you're not a Jedi yet, my lover. <laughs> It would have it would have been into, it would have been hot fuss in space basically. But, yeah, it would have been um, brilliant for the greater good. <laughs> the him greater Darth good back on the set. <laughs> but no, it, it, in terms of yeah, just just you know, physical presence as you say, lovely human being as well. So. And the Green Cross Code Man, of course, is your oh, background. Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't too keen on the, uh, Tufty for me. I thought Tufty was better. <laughs> That's because you're too. You didn't. Well, I'm. I'm the generation that had Dave Prowse as the Green Cross Code Man. No, he was a Green Cross Code Man when uh, when I was a kid because he came to our school um, as a Green Cross Code Man, and and all the all, all we want. It was primary school. All we wanted to talk about was Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> it 
you it's fair. That's him getting really quite annoyed because he was there as a green cross court. In now. fairness, I mean, it was worth it for you. I mean, if you were hit by the cars of your vintage, um, you would, um, you'd know all about it. I mean, oh, being please don't let me. Uh, you know, underestimate how much being hit by a car hurts full stop. But this was in a day before any any thought was given to pedestrian uh, well-being at all. So, um, you know, that's... Uh... Someone's just mentioned in the thread that uh, someone put up a, a Vader statue on the uh, the plinth where the Colston statue used to be in Bristol. I, I, I'm fully in favour of leaving that up there. Uh, I, leave see... Vader up. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to gloss over this if we're separating Vader from Prowse I mean you know that's the replacement of one fairly problematic individual with a very problematic individual so you know so he blew up a few planets <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, kill, 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 kill some Prowse kids. Back. You mean kill, kill some kids? You know, <laughs> kill some kids. Yeah. I still think they should have redone the um, when when they did the uh, the, the, the rejigged issues. Uh, you know, Obi Wan could have handed uh, Luke the giant the um, this is your father's lightsaber. He murdered <laughs> murdered got dozens on it. of children with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like this Baby Yoda thing recently where there was outrage because he was eating eggs, and it's like really you had Luke Skywalker was killing. Uh, Blinking Anakin Skywalker was killing kids, and you're complaining about Baby Yoda. No, I, I mean I was going to complain about his name, but I mean that's that's part of it. Yeah, it was a bit. It was the only downside. But anyway, Kaz, memories of Darth Vader. None, <laughs> none. I mean, I never got into Star Wars until I was older. Ooh. My my parents were not big into fantasy showing me fantasy. So sci-fi was fine, as long as it was within the realms of plausibility. Uh, so, so I missed out on all of it. <laughs> Isn't that an oxymoron? That's the weirdest <laughs> arbitrary boundary. So, of they only let you watch 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, sci-fi, if it could happen in the future, sure. But if it was completely, uh, you know, spaceships flying around um, and planets being blown up by the Death Stars. No, I didn't. I didn't really didn't get that. That that fell into the fantasy category. So I just missed out. On I need it, to know their they feelings on like sunshine. It. That means you didn't get to see Hawk the Slayer. You have really missed to, out. I didn't get to see loads and loads of things, and instead had to watch like Seven Samurai when I was about. Well, I, I mean, know, if you watched Hidden eight. Fortress, that's what Star Wars is based on. Yes, quite. <laughs> so I came from that angle. But oddly yeah. enough, that's probably why I really like the prequels, because yeah. that was that was more my time when I started to like Star Wars. Well, I mean, this week's Mandalorian, now we won't go into spoilers, but absolutely perfect from that point of view, wasn't it, in terms of that set is... design and, and culture and... I mean the the latest Mandalorian is. I don't think you can really spoil them. this episode. Of the Mandalorian has been like all over. Yeah, every... yeah. I mean, it's just <laughs> tremendous, <laughs> tremendous that they've done it that way. We don't know even, even in it. Michael <laughs> Bean in it. I mean, you know, yeah, just yeah, that was brilliant. Of... Yeah, it was brilliant. It's I mean, really well done. Bless him, he's not aging brilliantly, but you know, it's um, yeah, no, it's, it's so much fan service. Uh, all, all. But it's good fan service. It is good it's, fan it's, service. It's like it's not forced at no, all. It's there, no, to tell, it's, it's there to tell the story, and that's what I really like and about it. It doesn't feel run by committee either, which is which is probably no. what I did so many I other... I do get the feeling, though, before. that this season is basically being used as a backdoor pilot for about four other series. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and another thing, the danger is that it, you know, Mandalorian becomes sidelined because it's all about these other characters. I think this that you know the story arc that... He's following. I think they need, it needs Look, to be more focused. If it on opens the door to the wedge biopic, um, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it, I'm sorry, he's the most underrated character in Star Wars. We never know. He might be in the Obi Wan series. It's coming. You never know. I, I, I don't care. I just want more wedge. <laughs> Give me all the wedge. <laughs> Ed wants a wedgie. Right. Uh, moving <laughs> also, on. I just want to say one thing about Dave Prowse. Right. People often forget is that he also. Um, he was the guy that got uh, Christopher Reeve into shape for Superman because he was a bodybuilder originally. Uh, he was given the job of like, take this weedy actor and make him look like Superman for <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> Get moving. <laughs> but he did a pretty good job. Okay. Uh, and I think uh, Martin Hamilton's the only one. Um, he, he's obviously been under a rock because he says he's blissfully unaware of this week's Mandalorian. No, project. and then Martin Gillespie has also said so. Uh, As he, okay, okay. Well, you know, we, we haven't given away anything. How have you managed to do that? <laughs> over the internet. Um, so we haven't given away any spoilers there, but uh, it, it's epic. Go watch it after the podcast. Though. It's a good one. <laughs> it is very good. Right, Kaz, film review. Sure. Uh, I saw a preview of Boss Level, 
which is the latest from Joe Carnahan. And I, I didn't, looking at his filmography, he hasn't done anything really noteworthy in a decade. Since the uh, a while, <laughs> yeah, it's dark. I'd have said, oh, well, the gray is really good. Uh, oh, yeah, the gray is all right, and yeah. I quite like smoking aces. It's, it's kind yeah, of yeah, some trash TV, anyway. Uh, boss level is is pretty typical Carnahan if you think about it, but we're just not used to seeing him around. It's kind of a cross between Edge of Tomorrow and uh, Crank, which is a really good formula. Uh, Frank Grillo, who's who's I mean, like he's, he's basically he's become sort of your poor man action, poor man Jackson action hero, hasn't he? Like he has, but I mean, he deserves a break. He's he's been in bit parts. He's in the Marvel so films. Long. Yeah, he is, but it's <laughs> always tiny little roles. Um, and he's 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 really good in Netflix's Kingdom. So I'm hoping they give him another season of that. That's about MMA fighting, and he's in tip chop shape in this, but it's really good. It's the same formula that worked for Edge Tomorrow, Groundhog Day, you know, the keep dying, coming back thing, but they do it a lot more tongue in cheek. Uh, as I say, very crank, and he narrates the whole thing. Um, it's it's an absolute blast. Where can we watch this, Cars? I think you can watch it coming up this year to buy on premium rental because it's another one of these ones that's come out in the states and you know the covid comes the cinema's lock and people don't know what to do it but um but i've got it down as 2021 now so so who knows who knows where it'll actually land but uh, it's well worth looking out for um we've i've also seen already raised by wolves but that's finally coming to amazon this week is it, is it Amazon? Are you sure about that? Or is it Now TV? TV? Well, I thought it was Now TV. But I no, it was... it's HBO, so basically it ends up on Now TV. I wish they would launch H- HBO Max in this country and I get rid of Now TV and just take HBO Max. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, agree, mean, I agree with that. Quality. Yes, I agree, particularly because they're doing Wonder Woman in 4K with Dolby Vision. Well, Wonder Woman, yeah, you can watch it on Christmas Day if you've got HBO Max in America. Yes, Here we have yes. to put our health at risk and go yeah. to the bloody cinema. Yeah, but That's I mean, much, guys. <laughs> on HBO Max, you can watch it in 4K with Dolby Vision. Even yes, if, if it we came, had HBO Max. Yeah, if we, if it, but even if it came to us on Now TV. Well, yeah. Yes, would you stand? You know, I mean, yeah, the, the Zack Snyder Justice League. I don't want to watch on HBO, on um, Now TV. Now TV. <laughs> I don't watch anything on Now TV. I can help it. I don't yes. mind putting done because it's not like that's you know, if I can or family guy that's fine <laughs> but yes. anything that's involves anything picture that's quality good. and sound yeah. quality <laughs> yeah yeah I mean obviously I've got Sky Q so I don't have those issues I can watch you've it. got lip sync but, instead yeah <laughs> it's, it's, I can watch it <laughs> and watch it in uh, in 4k and so on but I've got to say I've been really disappointed with Sky Q um it's not lived up to uh to its initial promise uh, in terms of quality and so on. Sky have really fallen behind in terms of... Uh, no, well behind. Yeah, you know, well behind in terms of technology and so on. It's uh, It's been really disappointing. I mean, If Amazon come in with their massive checkbook and buy Premiership Football and Sky... This Premier. is the thing. This yeah. the, the, Essentially, it's now uh, they have a single card bet large and that's it. Yeah. And they're up, against, a, they're up against people who have space They're up programs. against a company with an infinite amount of money. Yeah, yeah it seems <laughs> and, and ludicrous uh, that... And don't try Sky Q with a soundbar either, because yeah, you'll never get, get anything in sync. Issues. I mean, that strikes me as absurd, given that I can obtain lip sync running through an upsampler and a DAC into a stereo amp. And, yep. you know, that's, you know, essentially I take the feed from an LG television and mainly for convenience rather than the desire that a belief it genu- it genuinely changes a tv signal it changes it to 24 768 and i still get lip sync yeah no it's 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 a it's a fantastic concept and you know when i first had it in the house i thought this is genius the way that they've done this but the thing is the quality is just not there it's it's like yeah they've done this and then just haven't given it a second thought they haven't corrected anything that's gone wrong with it like the lip sync issue you just look at our forums go and have a look through the forums it's been around for a long 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 time and it hasn't been fixed at all with firmware updates or anything i still can't get disney plus and i've got the latest box one terabyte box still can't get disney plus in hdr um i at all. i i I notice that there's been you know quite a few on say when i'm watching stuff like videos on youtube where there's quite often um 
adverts for well there's a lot of adverts these days unfortunately on youtube but quite often see adverts for sky q and and they're basically promoting it. it's like you can access netflix and disney plus yeah i can do that from any number of devices if that's <laughs> yeah. the best you got to offer you are screwed boys well it's like yeah. when they uh they said you can have 1080p for a three quid add on a month. Yeah, exactly. In an age of 4K and Dr. Uh, Health. I mean, they still cars. charge for HD cars. Yes. It's well, that's what I'm still, saying. Yeah. So they'll charge. Yeah, you've got to pay extra for that little privilege. Yeah. Um, for a yeah, privilege I've, of watching I've, it in 1080p. In a heartbeat if Warner's launch HBO Max in this country. Yeah. Well, I, when my. Uh, I got a really good deal last Black Friday um, and it runs for 18 months. As soon as 18 months is up, they can come and take their equipment back. And that's another thing. There's people on the forums who own it who were early adopters, you never own the, the, the equipment, but these early adopters who pay a fortune um, are not being given uh, box, replacement boxes for free. They have to pay 50 quid for Sky to replace it with something that belongs to Sky anyway at the end of your contract. It's like, come on, guys. This is I don't know how any... Um, uh, I see lots of positive reviews, and I don't know how anybody can review it positively. I I hate Sky. I really do. Oh well, yeah. yeah, but this, in fairness to you, this has been a consistent position for ten years. Oh yeah, no, uh, twenty years. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it, it, but ultimately the mechanism of simply trying to buy all the content and leverage out relatively mediocre hardware platforms from there dies in a world where you are competing with, as I say, people who have their own space programs. You can't, you can't <laughs> buy all the content. Um, so th- this but, is but where... You, you would think that this would be kicking them on, though. You know, they could lose out the premiership. You know, they, they, they've got com- more and more competition coming along. They really need to be, you know, backing up their ideas. Technology is where they could really make a big difference and become a premium platform. And let's face it, you pay premium prices for it. And it's just like... I think they've given up. I really do because they the used to be. They used there. to set the trend. Didn't yeah, they? They, I mean, they weren't doing a lot of the research. The BBC. Can, can the you remember football before Sky, where it used to look like it was like yeah. one camera? Yeah, the coverage. If you're lucky, were, it was two cameras at the ground. I miss the eighties graphics. Full HD, I weren't they? That sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, first to do that. First, and Sky when Sky Plus first appeared i mean don't get me wrong i know that there were tivo adopters and so on and so forth but it was it was the combination of the content with the the hardware that was absolutely untouchable um but uh, since then it's always felt it's always felt responsive rather than proactive and i think time is possibly starting to run so 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 anyway cars raised by wolves where can we watch it (laughs) (laughs) unfortunately now tv or sky (laughs) Is it now TV? Is it every every? We... Uh, if you, it's, yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's. I was because I saw um, Kaz's copy in the CMS and thought, oh, on Amazon, excellent, it will look good. Then I look, looked online to find out when it was going to be on, and then everyone said it's now TV, which made sense because it's it's an HBO series. Um, and uh, then I was disappointed because I thought, okay, it's going to look crap. <laughs> yeah. So just give us a, a brief premise of what this is about, Kaz, because I've certainly haven't heard of it. Oh, do I want to really give anything away? I mean, it's, no, no, just uh, give a quick premise. It's the, it's the best. Anything. It's the best thing that Ridley Scott's done in ages. It's basically that's not saying a lot. That's no, a very that's low bar. It's basically, <laughs> the production values of um, one of his Alien movies mm-hmm. and the kind of conceptual ideas of one of his Alien movies, but with none of the restrictions of having to be set in that universe. So it's a. a a couple of androids land on a planet, an alien planet, and have to bring up human children is the premise. But set against a backdrop of um, a, a religious war between two factions, one of whom uh, adopts a, uh, androids and believes that they're useful, and the other of whom think they're, they're sacrilegious against God. And uh, having to repopulate the planet after the planet you know, turns to crap basically um but it's very it's very well done the effects are tremendous the the mood is ominous throughout you you know you know ridley scott and androids and their milky white blood i mean it's it's never gonna never gonna go swimmingly for them He, he doesn't make them um as flawless creations which are never gonna trip out and try and kill you so um so it's a lot of it's it's very very well done and it consistently 
surprises you. So by the end of the first episode, you really think you know, you know who's bad and what's going to happen, where it's going to go. By the end of the season, it's flipped it about six times. Um, I thought it was great, great TV, great sci-fi. Um, going to be absolutely ruined on Now TV, but uh, but it's uh, well worth checking out. Okay, good stuff. Right, let's move on. Uh, 4K disc reviews and stuff. What you've been looking at, cars? Everything. I mean, I, I, I got ev- I mean, And yet somehow in that long list, you've managed to miss The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I didn't get it. It wasn't, it wasn't part of my remit. I mean, I, I thought I was saving myself some trouble uh, by not covering those. I haven't re- uh, pre-ordered them. I haven't picked them up. I mean, I, I've got zero time. They're amazing. I, I know. I hear, here they are, but it's like 12, totally 12 hours of my life that I just, I just don't have. But, um, but I thought I was doing myself some favours, but I've had to cover like everything else. Um, Requiem for the dream for a dream was the toughest one. I was yeah, a, a joy fest from start to finish. I was never going to watch it again. I said to myself, <laughs> I would never watch it. Like 15, 20 years ago, I would never watch it again. I said it and it was going straight to Simon and the PR company sent, sent it to me on day of release. And, uh, so here we are. I, uh, I watched it on disc, on DVD, when it first came out on DVD. What was it? 2000, was it? 2000? 1999 or 2000. No, it was 2000, 2000. Yeah, and I watched it on a Sunday morning with a monumental hangover. <laughs> and the experience of being A, physically sick myself, plus the film itself, I yeah. was, I could never, I couldn't go anywhere near it again. Again, it took, I'm not surprised. Years, yeah. And I did watch the 4K disc. It does look and sound stunning. I have no yeah. well, Jennifer no Connelly... Sorry, I have on. no desire to watch it again. Can I just say that it is um, the moment when Clint Mansell came of age? As yeah, it's fantastic. It's great yeah, track. And, it and, is and, fantastic. And can, story, if you yeah. listen back, I mean, I, I I make no bones. I love Pop Release itself. He did some magnificent stuff with them, but you would never credit the the metamorphosis. I mean, it, from from doing what he was doing with Pop Release itself to because uh, he did some of the stuff for Pi before Requiem for yeah, Dreams. Yeah, Pi so is we, a great soundtrack. Yeah, it is, but that's much more about picking stuff and working with it. Requiem for a Dream. Was a was a from scratch score, and it's utterly outstanding. It is, Essentially, it is. it's the, it, you know it's like in football where you manage to find the the talent bombing around the lower leagues and get them on a bargain. Um, Aronofsky got someone who writes amazing film scores for a song and uh, Requiem. Well, no pun intended. And Requiem for a Dream is just outstanding for that. That um, music with the string quartet has been in every Kronos trailer quartet. ever since. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. 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 Including the, the, the two towers. Actually, it was yes, the towers. Yeah. absolutely. There, there was a there was a period on early YouTube where there was lots and lots and lots of parody uh, trailers and it was always using that that track. I think they did a Toy Story trailer to yeah. that track. It's <laughs> brilliant. Um, but no, I mean, he, he's gone from strength to strength after that. Um, and um, you don't have to watch the film whilst you're listening to it. I mean, obviously, if you have seen the film, you get flashbacks of what you saw in the film. But I mean, you know, nothing's, <laughs> nothing's perfect. So uh, it's like the pitch quality is stunning, and Jennifer yeah, Connolly, even though she's meant to be looking rough because she's supposed to be a drug addict, is still uh, just absolutely gorgeous. In it. Yeah, she does. Uh, she only momentarily manages to look even vaguely realistic as a as a drug addict, but um, it's really good. Back in the day when like Jared Leto was uh, was watchable, and um, <laughs> you know it's it's crazy. And uh, Marlon Wayans, Marlon, isn't it? Marlon Wayans is really yeah. good in it too. It's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Good, and, uh, Ellen Burstyn, <laughs> don't forget Ellen Burstyn. Yeah, oh well, yeah, she's she just yeah, but you'd expect that from her. I mean, she actually steals the show. It's it's, it's but, a good it's a good film, but it's not a good watch. It's not an easy watch. No, no, and not a laugh a minute. Yeah, uh, but, I, I, fabulous, fabulous. Although oddly on point for Christmas twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> What better way to finish the year? <laughs> I watched it when it came out, and you know what? I cannot remember anything about it. Oh, it's embedded into the back of my bloody eyelids. I don't oh, think, yeah, yeah, I don't think I could ever forget some of that. But, uh, yeah. but yes. Anyway, so to take the taste of that out of my mouth, um, I watched a lot of Eddie Murphy, um, which also <laughs> landed on Monday. So uh, we that's had not Eddie Murphy. Stop. Stuart, that's not Eddie Murphy. <laughs> That's Wesley Snipes, Stuart. 
That's all right. racist. We'll, Vaguely racist, the way you just we'll put your we'll Wesley Snipes with Jimmy Eddie Murphy. We'll be talking about Blade shortly, but yeah, look, watch, the, watch the bunch of Eddie Murphy. Uh, yeah, it's your Beverly Hills Cop and Beverly Hills coming Cop. to America. Yep. And I started coming to America. I mean, Beverly Hills Cop looks tremendous. Mm, it does. Um, Fantastic. I, I really enjoyed rewatching that, and it just made me dread where they went with that, with the sequels. It is a great film. I don't get how they could. It didn't need a sequel, and if you didn't do one, don't give it to Tony. I love Tony Scott, don't get me wrong, but he yeah. wasn't the right guy to make that. No, I mean, he makes it look good, but it, it doesn't Great action scenes, hearts. looks amazing, yeah. but it's not funny. No. Uh, and the third one, don't. Just, just I've got don't. it on disc, never seen it. Directed by John Landis, of all people, which is bizarre, because mm. when he made Coming to America with John Landis, they both fell out. And famously, Eddie Murphy said afterwards, John Landis has got more chance of working with Vic Morrow again than he has working with me. Yeah, and then someone... Vic Morrow being the guy that died on, on the set of, um, of um, Twilight Zone. Oh, God. Vic Morrow is. <laughs> that's, that's how bad they fell out. <laughs> yeah, but then they cut Eddie Murphy a check. And, uh, and he came back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big enough check. Laid three for style for, uh, for a third. Well, you should watch it, because within the first 10 minutes, you'll realise that whoever wrote that and got them to do it, I mean, yeah, it's an appalling, appalling third movie. Um, but that was that was a lot of fun. Coming to America, I now that's a film, you know, where Phil says he can't remember Requiem for a Dream. I I watched the entire first half an hour of that and couldn't remember a single thing. None of the stuff that well, maybe one. The royal thing. penis is now clean. That's the yes, one that's the it. one thing that I remember. Wipers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I remember, is Andy Murphy playing about four different characters in it? Yes, it was one of the and first. Arsenio movies. Hall is a couple of characters too, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm looking forward to that bit. But yeah, I'm enjoying that. And I couldn't, your blade landed today. I mean, you know, it's over here. It's a fantastic looking I didn't box. buy it because I remember the effects being it's very so rubbish. Okay. <laughs> look, look, it looks tremendous. I mean, even for 2000, they were ropey. The, the effects are <laughs> are still they're still in fact perhaps more glaring when they look wrong but it's just such a brilliant ride and the soundtrack is possibly the best soundtrack i've heard this year i couldn't i had to keep turning it down fur blade too it was uh yes i can see that i can see why there's an argument for that but the first 10 minutes of blade is it's one of the best memories seeing that for the first time the first 10 minutes of blade where he rocks up in the and wrecks the disco. Tracy Lords of all people, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it's tremendous. The the music spot on, the action's fabulous. I mean, it, yeah, it's really very very good. Looks and sounds tremendous. So, I've had a whole stack of discs in, but uh, those are the highlights at the moment. And no Lord of the Rings. But we've covered Ooh. that anyway. So I'm worry. I'm trying to ignore Lord of the Rings because I, I really can't afford it at the minute. Don't want to be spending. Well, Mate, be, I, another edition next Phil. year. I'm not looking for your sympathy on this, but I mean, in terms of, um, uh, as you point out, cynically, you know, disc releases are, are on the way down. You know, spare spare a thought for those those of us with obsolete formats because it's just gone bananas. Because you know, they, they they view us as cash cows, and we probably are. So yeah. yeah. Could be worse. Yeah, you're idiots. If you're going to yeah, buy an obsolete idiots. format, yeah. they should take you for every penny you've got. <laughs> At least I might be an idiot, but it doesn't depreciate with us. So you know, could be worse. Well, I mean, I you have... know, enjoy enjoy your vast reams of plastic, which are worth buttons. I have noticed that 4K has <laughs> started to go up in price. You right. know, like well, like... so I bought a few things recently. Um, you know, like the Total Recall box set, yes. the Dawn of the yeah. Dead box set, which you can't buy anymore. No, Dawn of the Red um, Dead was sixty-five quid. Total Recall was fifty quid. Coming to America is only available in a steelbook for twenty-five quid. Um, they're they're being quite clever about these things. Hmm. To be honest, that might give you some level of long term survivability. Yes, yes, I completely. I'm I'm okay with it because actually I quite like all of this stuff. But it's an interesting tactic. Like like Arrow will do, or Studio Canal, they'll do really nice lavish box sets, and they'll they'll charge you fifty quid for some postcards, and you'll go and you'll go. You know what? I love those I this movie. I really want this movie in four K, and it comes in a box. <laughs> So I think it maybe they'll keep the format alive just by basically ripping us off. Oh, yeah. So I, this reminds me of the days of Laserdisc, Phil. You know. <laughs> yeah, but you see, the, the, the <laughs> we thing with that was Steve. Shoot on that. <laughs> yeah, you, you you did, but the other reason was that we normally got the American stuff nine months before 
it came to the cinema yeah, that was the other reason, yeah. so you didn't mind spending the 50 quid on a disc because you were seeing it nine months ahead of everybody else yeah. um, and there was that there was that kudos of that coming to america on 4k Ultra <laughs> so for 25 pounds yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like comes in a tin of, Comes comes in a tin. Yeah. I haven't got it here, but you I could buy it on Wow HD. I think for about fifteen quid and get it from <laughs> yeah, 18, and get it in like six months' States. time. Yeah. yeah, I'm still waiting on my copy of Mad Max 4K from Wow. Have you got that yet, Steve? No, uh, but it was only shipped last week. Uh, it Didn't should come ship? any day. I'm expecting it any day. It usually takes it takes it'll take a bit longer at the moment because of Thanksgiving. Yeah. To to be honest, I mean, um, I've got the uh, I re- the album of the week from weeks ago, the Sturgill Simpson um, Cut and Grass, yep. finally releases on vinyl on Friday, and I'm hopefully looking forward to that turning up on day of release, because uh, I just want everyone to <laughs> around me to think I'm weird and I already yep. am. So, you know. Steve uh, Richard Sim Seven, obviously, uh, he keeps mentioning this on a regular basis uh, in the podcast what? chats about the bass being neutered on uh, 4K discs. What do you want days? to do about it? <laughs> Well, I was, I was going to banging on about it. I'm sorry, it's nothing to do with me. It's I was true, say, though. It didn't say it was anything to do with you. I was just going to ask you, you defensive. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, we all know that you haven't got that that kind of pool anyway. Level of power, yeah. no. No. Sadly, uh, all I was going to say is, did you notice it on Lord of the Rings? Oh no, 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 no. That's a fully, a full, um, full, no mucking about. Atmos mix. Oh, you should see the graphs, Steve. You should no. see the graphs. Oh, People really? have put the up graphs. Up. There's a hundred oh, comments on Simon's review, including some very pretty graphs. The graphs tell you a lot. There's, there's it's math. true, though. I've, I've been watching a lot of um, older Blu-rays um, uh, be, you know, because there hasn't been much coming out. Uh, and, uh, and there was so much more bass. Yeah, but is this a reference? Is this... I really don't want to open this mm. Pandora's box, but I'm going to anyway. Um, is this not is this representative of it being wrong before and right now, but we're used to there being more, or are they actually being well, it's an curtailed? Point. I mean, the, what they've what the graphs say apparently is that we're we're losing entire frequencies. So I, and it, I think it's anything under uh, thirty hertz. Thirty, yeah, um, yeah. It's, so, it's been filtered out. Um, saying now, it's for the soundbar crew, um, yeah. and and I have to say, I mean, for example, I I watched, as I say, the beginning of Blade, and I thought that that was tremendous. I mean, there was a proper rumble throughout. You know, it didn't it didn't even need the music to kick up. I mean, you could hear the rumble of the music when they were approaching the warehouse. To go into the party so it was uh it was very 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 lively if someone's going to come along and show me a graph i'm still going to say it sounded tremendous i um i okay. watched the new mutants at the weekend for my sins and um not a great film but shed loads of bass on that soundtrack yeah no i i i have no doubt that this is going on um i don't buy enough new discs to have witnessed this myself and the disc that I have bought recently, like uh, Le Mans 66 and so on. I, it sounded fantastic to me. So I haven't personally had it, but I think you said something, was it um, one of the uh, Tom Cruise movies recently? Was yeah, it, no, uh, the, I did compare the worlds. worlds. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's no question there's more bass in the blu ray than there is in the Atmos mix. Right. Okay. I mean, so I did, I, it's an issue then. It, it, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, I didn't compare the old disc, but I did find that Total Recall could have done with more bass it was there were only a few scenes in that which were which were really throaty but to be honest it was um i don't remember what the mix, movie. 1990 mix so yeah exactly so we had a lot of I, bass back then maybe not no but it's yeah it's, it's, richard nobody's uh nobody's uh saying that you were saying it sounds bad either it's just it's it's an interesting point i think i think maybe we need to uh in the new year, maybe look at uh, who we could um, approach and get on to talk about this and mm. see why uh, why these issues exist. Uh, there has to be a reason for it. If if lots of these um, titles are now coming out like this, um, maybe there is something in terms of uh, production of of these that you know that these filters are being put in. Why? Maybe we need to find out. So. We'll have a we'll have a look at it in the new year. If it I is mean, I issue. will say that um, there's a video on YouTube, uh, an interview with Peter Jackson about these new releases. I mean, he was very hands-on. I mean, he oversaw the restoration of the picture and the sound, 
Um, obviously, The Hobbit had Atmos mixes from the cinema releases, but he had to do new mixes for um, Lord of the Rings. And so I would be surprised if, you know, given the level of involvement he had in these releases, uh, that, because um, he went back through, you know, completely color time, recolor timed, um, particularly uh, um, Fellowship, because it was uh, originally, the color timing was largely done photochemically. Uh, and um, whereas for Two Towers and, and Turn of the King, they, they had more of a more DI technology available to them. But even then it was still limited because it was 20 years ago. So the, uh, he's completely gone through and recolor timed everything the way it should have been. And um, even some of the effects, they haven't changed the effects, but they have you know, tidied up the edges on a few things because they looked a bit ropey 20 years later. Uh, so given the amount of involvement he's had in it, I'd be amazed if he had um, you know, deliberately hamstrung, hamstrung his own sound yeah. truck. What, Steve, what if, it's, uh, what if it's a pipeline thing? It so what if, what if it's a technology stance? So he might not be involved in it. He just says, look, let's, let's have the Atmos mix put on. And he's not told that now the pipeline doesn't involve any low end frequencies. Well, I mean, Richard Simmons just yeah, posted, he's, that, uh, yeah. he's posted uh, your hero, uh, Christopher Nolan, recently said that in an interview uh, that there's certainly low frequencies, low end frequencies that are automatically getting filtered out by the software that's being used to. Well, to master. Yeah, hang on, hang on a second. I'm going to notice that by hang Christopher on. Nolan's movies, but so we can hear the dialogue. <laughs> if there's an argument that the complete package going from well above your head to the LFE is better served by a little bit of control being introduced to the LFE. I mean, essentially, given that yeah. given that you, you you guys make great play about the fact that you have standards to operate to, and I exist in a world without standards. If those standards have decided that then the mechanics of doing um, object based around does gently curtail the low end, then technically, if that is a, something that's being sort of agreed upon, I mean, obviously that's the killer. It needs to be it needs to be seen if there is an agreed method by which this is being yeah. done. I mean, it's it's not the first time that this kind of thing has been done yeah. because if you so, go back to the so days of uh, DVD and early Blu-ray, if it was THX certified, um, normally the high frequencies were rolled off um, mm. when the sound mix was done because Excellent, obviously. Uh, yeah, because obviously uh, the theatre mixes they were mixed in a certain way because of the uh, they had to get through the uh, the screens. You know, obviously the speakers about were behind the screens, <laughs> um, and they had to they had to re EQ. Um, and a lot of AVRs back in the day also had features called re EQ, which used to uh, re equalise the the high frequencies. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that the software that is being used, like Christopher Nolan says in the studios when they're, they're doing the post production is filtering this out um, and you know that could be the reason for it Ed yeah. like you've said um, I think it'd be interesting to maybe try and get somebody on we, we, we need to find a grown up uh, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I promise that if you do get a grown up on I'll just sit silently <laughs> and not, not drink not is, it, is it called is it called ULF is it it's the ultra low frequencies we're talking about here I don't think it's just. No, it's, uh, I think it's, gen it's generally LFE. I mean, thirty yeah. hertz. LFE is anything below one hundred and twenty hertz on a sound. Yeah, the actual we're, LFE. We're talking track. about ten and twenty oh here. God, look at now, those when you get below twenty hertz, well, you most think. I mean, I think you know. I think that's ultra low frequency. Yeah, well, it's, it's hell of a and, and under, that deep anyway. Well, and, under twenty hertz, you're not going to hear it. It's, you're going to feel it. That's more about moving air, um, and obviously the frequency length, and that kind of frequency as well is 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 hundreds of feet in yeah, terms these of wave, people, these wave people want to move some so, air yeah so don't we all yeah I, it'd be interesting <laughs> just to find out what is going on because obviously you look yeah. at the graphs and yeah i can see straight away in the graphs that the things are yes are, yes. are rolling off uh, from 30 hertz downwards so it'd be interesting to see why is that the case who made that decision and if there are reasons for it and i'm sure yeah. we can find through our contacts with thx and the other people in the industry um that we could we'll try and find, find some sacrificial yeah. lab. We should get find Nolan some. on board and talk to him through microphones. Right. Um, okay. So we need to wrap up on uh, what we're watching. So um, <laughs> Mandalorian. Each. I think we've. I think we've mentioned that. Yeah, <laughs> Mandalorian. D Discovery. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to say Discovery. This last episode was. Um, better but she's still crying she's cried every, every episode, episode she cries, she cries. <laughs> i'm struggling with my nerves now. yeah 
I, I was going to say is it sponsored by Kleenex, but people might take that the wrong way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, definitely, you know, there's not a dry eye anywhere um, in these things. Quite interesting that, that uh, Tilly's been given some um, managerial post, so it'll be interesting to see how that Take away, progresses. I need to refuse her access to her fridge for a bit, I think that's what I need to do with Tilly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, this week's looks from the trailer. It looks like it's 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 going to kick up again in terms of action. So, we'll see if we can get through an episode without her crying. It's just not what you need from Star Trek. Though. I mean, no, I'm struggling. No, no. Well, it's not Star Trek. Though, that's, that's why I just like, to consider it, it to not be Star Trek anymore, and therefore can watch uh, it because it's not Star Trek. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm sure Episode Two took me three sessings to get through the whole thing. Oh, it hasn't been pretty, but you know I'm a glutton for punishment with these things. I've, I've sat through two seasons, so I may as well sit through this. Well, annoyingly, well. it is pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Production values are super. Oh, it looks beautiful. <laughs> the effects are amazing. You know, the money's up on the screen, definitely. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was literally a year later. Oh, I bet she's done her hair. That was literally what happened. Well, I love in the first episode when she was meant to still have short hair from the previous season, and it was clearly her dreads were <laughs> bunged under a wig. <laughs> You could tell it wasn't that, you know, that she was wearing right, a wig. Okay, shall we stop complaining way. about stuff that we didn't really like and actually talk about stuff that Well, we I mean, it, there's uh, Neil Brand's back on BBC4 this Friday yeah, with uh, the so- sound of TV. His his stuff usually is great. I mean, I love yeah. his music. The musicals, musicals and, and movies. Uh, he's done two great series. So, yeah. 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 so this is the sound of TV. So your EastEnders and Coronation Street and stuff, as well as... It, Interestingly, Kaz did uh, he did the review for Black Beauty. As soon as he mentioned Black Beauty, the TV theme was running. In my head. I don't know if that was an Alan Partridge thing or, <laughs> <laughs> or actually, but as soon as he mentioned Black Beauty, the theme tune was re- was playing in my head. It's, it's just, in my head now. Yeah, it's like the final. Well, countdown at least you haven't got Europe. theme music from Hello Hello in your head. From- <laughs> From, from morphing accidentally from the Mandalorian into a low low. I don't even know how you get there. No, that's that, that's no. your mental illness. <laughs> you can very quickly go. <laughs> no, I still enjoy the Mandalorian theme. Sorry, you can't ruin it, Steve. As I say, it makes, setting, it makes setting off in your car a thousand percent more exciting. I just, <laughs> I just bought the art of the Mandalorian book to read over Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Some of the some, somebody things. was complaining last week that we're giving the Mandalorian too much love. Um, <laughs> it's not that great. You know what? After after the recent after uh, thirty years films, of rubbish, I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> I'm taking what I get at the minute because I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's it's yes. it's Star Wars to me. This series yeah. is Star Wars to me. Whereas the the films, I didn't quite get get on with it. Yeah. And I know people right. love the films, and that's fair enough. It, I know it wasn't for me. Mandalorians for me. I'm really enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, they can make more, more of these, you know, do more series and forget the films. I'd be happy, you know, just mm-hmm. do as many series as they can. If they want to do an Ashoka Tana series, bring it on. Yeah. Obi-Wan, bring it on. Whatever, just yeah. get on with it. Just well, I mean, it, the, the effects work, the cinematography, yeah, the, no, you know, everything is, is amazing. Mm. Really, really good. Yeah. Right, we're going to end on that then. No, yeah, well, just to, just to say um, very quickly, uh, if you're not just watching those things, um, I've been thoroughly enjoying Master Chef. I'm sure Steve has been too. Yes, it's been um, excellent. Part uh, that's been very, very good. Last week's mystery. Um, <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed because um, it sort of it was only four episodes, and I dare say for Phil it would be a busman's holiday. But the Crash Detectives on BBC, um, where you know the police instant people go through how RTAs have happened and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. that absolutely uh, again. I mean, you know, they 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 you know cut it about so you know you get revelations at the end and the rest of it and it's clear that you know all, all power to the guys researching uh, doing the doing the investigation they probably worked it out a long time before but it's really it was really good television i thoroughly enjoyed both of those programs and yeah. master chef still got more to give I'd, anything invested in that like, follows an investigation i enjoy so i'll have a look at that although like you say i mean ptsd and all the rest of it it might trigger it so maybe uh... well your your call i felt that it was well handled um, they didn't, you know, didn't do anything particularly, particularly gratuitous. 
Um, and the, 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 in, in particular, I mean, the only thing I can think of that's changed a little bit since when you were doing it is um, the amount of information that can be dug out of vehicle ECUs as to what yeah. it was doing. I mean, it, I, a lot of this is now civilian roles now, so a, a lot of them are not actually uh, sworn in police officers. As well, only. in Wales, One where these two. guys are set, it does seem to be that they are. Yeah. So, But what you'll find now, though, from when I was in the force to where you are now, a lot of jobs that were specialist officers are now those special officer, officers, but they're now there as civilians, mm. um, employed as civilians. I, I mean, um, there was four episodes. Just to say, I thought I thought it was 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 deep. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it. A, I'll give it a look. See what it's like. Um, right. Okay. Are we done? Any other recommendations? Or um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, not really. <laughs> That's about me done. Uh, Graham Cartwright donated two pounds this evening via Thank the super you very chat. Much. Thank you very much, Graham. That is yeah. uh, appreciated. Um, yeah, keep them coming through if you can to uh, streamlabs.com forward slash AV forums, uh, or if you want to do it on a more regular basis and have a great chance of winning the competitions <laughs> yeah. with some of the best odds out there, um, then do <laughs> Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com forward slash AV forums and uh, support us three pounds a month. Could be the best three pounds you've ever spent if you win the competitions that's a big if but um if you've been asking us questions or if you've been using the chat window thank you very much thank you for uh, joining us this evening it's uh, it's been a pleasure as always and my thanks to ed selly um sorry hang on uh <laughs> boy that escalated quickly <laughs> Kaz Hallam. i'm in a glass cage of emotion and steve at the Withers. beginning Kaz. <laughs> Oh, he obviously wasn't listening, Steve. Right. Obviously, he gone for I'm riding a furry tractor, <laughs> which is what Steve's gone for, presumably. Right. No, I know. I was going to go for the name of San Diego, which, of course, in German means a whale's vagina. <laughs> <laughs> or the human torch yeah. was denied a bank loan. <laughs> we did that at the beginning as well. Yeah. No, we did that. No, we did, we off, did that in the we beginning. We did that. That was off camera. Off started, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if you've enjoyed the podcast, then obviously please give us a like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Ring the notification bell and you'll be informed every time we uh, publish a new video. And of course, uh, if you're watching or listening uh, later in the week, then you can ask us questions, podcast at avforums.com. Send in your questions. We will read them out and answer them uh, on the following show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You can bookmark AV Forums for latest reviews, news, and videos. And of course, leave us a five-star rating on any of the providers that you use for your podcast. If they allow you to leave a review, then please do. Uh, I'm Phil Hinton. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you again next Wednesday. <laughs>